so person so this is um, the meeting of the district advisory board um, September 14th, 2021 and pursuant of to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner. Via Zoom on the webinar ID 824-1448-3351. No in, person, no in person attendance of members of the public will be permitted and public participation in any public hearing conducted during this meeting shall be by remote means only. Okay. Okay. So I must apologize, I didn't open the agenda uh, in time. So let me open the agenda. The first item is always public comment and I think, um, there's nobody, but give me one second as I, so that I can open the agenda. Um, oh, um, Tracy can't find the panelist link. I got an email. Hold on one second. I'm going to send okay. something to her. Yep. Let me see. Okay, sending it. Here. I'm sorry about the delay. Um, so if there's no, there's seven. Isn't the seventh is uh, Tracy or there's an attendee? Um, here comes Tracy. I'm going to move her. It looks like somebody has their hand up. That was Tracy. Oh. She was in the attendees. Okay. And she okay. also had her hand up and here she comes. Great. Okay. So if there is no public comment, there's time to make public comments at the end of the meeting as well. So we continue with the agenda and the next item is to approve the meetings. No, the first thing, um, we're gonna to have to change slightly the order because Joseph is not here. And he said he requested that somebody else takes minutes because he won't be able to do the minutes of this meeting. So I need a volunteer to take the minutes for this meeting. Anyone? I, I'm hearing music. <laughs> I'm hearing music also. Somebody has music on? Um, we, need, we need one volunteer to have the minutes because Joseph said he cannot make it this week. All right, I'll do it. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so you can do it uh, real time or as uh, Joseph do it, does it with the video afterwards. I'm, uh, yeah, I'll see. I'll see okay. how it goes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so the next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of last meeting of the meeting of September 8th. Um, I didn't see them in the packet or when did they get added? Joe sent them to me this morning. So they got added oh. right after he sent them. So, yep. did, so I'm gonna poll people, did people have time to go over them or we postpone the discussion until next time since it was added so late? I, uh, I did go over them, but um, since Joseph's not here, I'm wondering if we should yeah. just wait. Okay, That's so fine. then, so I move that we postpone the, the discussion, we table the discussion until next meeting for the minutes of September 8th. I second that. Okay, so Tammy Parks. Aye. I think we have to vote. Mary Blaustein. Aye. Craig Meadows. Aye. Peggy Shannon. Aye. Tracy Safian. Aye. Irene Hovne, aye. So the motion passes, so we postpone the discussion until next meeting. Um, I'm sorry, I have too many windows open and I have to find the agenda again. <laughs> um, the next item to discuss is the, does anybody have any announcement um, to make? I do. 
Okay. Um, just very briefly, I was speaking with Mindy Dom, our um, representative the other day, on um, just sort of catching her up to where we're at and what we were thinking. And she, um, she was well informed, of course, already, and uh, said that whatever support we need or want, if there's anybody we want, need to, um, for her to advocate for us and at the State House or anything, that she is ready to do that. So, excellent. Excellent. Because I was thinking that we might have to contact somebody to see whether we can get some recommendation regarding the number of people in each precinct, whether that's going to raise, whether they can tell us in advance. So when we discussed the, the response from the state that I got this week, we got partial response to the questions that we had last week. So maybe I'm wondering whether she can help us find the answer to the second part of the question because we have not heard back. Tracy? So I relate a comment to that. So, I mean, I had, well, Mindy Dom was tabling at the farmer's market a few weeks ago, right? And so I had talked with her then, both about um, the, our committee, but then also about, you know, other town issues and so on. But, um, so I had been under the impression uh, that uh, in terms of, you know, our, our maps need to get voted on and approved by the local election uh, whatever, district review board, review commission, sorry. And I'd been under the impression, just like with the re-precincting um, board that's looking at like statewide with congressional um, precincts that, that that entity like was part of the legislature. Um, but then I realized when I looked into it that the local election district review commission is actually part of the secretary of the commonwealth's office um and that was why i just had that i asked sue to just include that part of the state statutes in the um in our packet for this week um just as an information item because it's interesting because some of the correspondence we've gotten from their office like sort of says well this looks good to us but we don't know what that redistricting committee is going to say so you're going to need to get it approved by them. Like we can't actually confirm or deny that it's good or not good. Um, and it was really interesting to me to find out how that is composed. That it's basically three representatives. Um, there's an appointee from the attorney general's office. There's an appointee from the secretary of the state, secretary of commonwealth's office. And then there's also um, an appointee from the governor. And there is a website on, this, on the state ends and it doesn't list the current appointees, I don't think. Like I did find a news article about who the governor's appointee is, but I don't know who the other appointees are. Um, but it's basically this three person committee that is like the final approval checking at the state level to say that our districts are okay. So, I mean, I think it's great that Mindy Dom is willing to help us too, but I don't, because okay. it doesn't actually go through the legislature. I'm not sure how much her advocacy can help or not help. <laughs> I mean, I wish I wish it wasn't the legislature, and then we could get like her support and you know, Joe Comerford's and stuff. But so anyway, that was my take. Um, okay. And also, I just had two other quick things. One is that I have to go pick up my child at six thirty, um, and so I can be in the meeting, but on my phone for like probably like 10, 15 minutes. So if we have a quorum issue or anything, I can still be. I just won't okay. be video. Um, and also I was curious, like, is Mike able to attend tonight or did he have? Mike is gonna be late. He has okay. uh, issues at home and so he's gonna be attending. No, I was, so just, I was just checking. Okay. I think we can start with many things that don't require him and then um, we might have to switch some order. Okay. Okay, great, thanks. So? Um, wanna let you all know that I have been working on a cost analysis, uh, 10 precincts versus 15 precincts. I haven't posted anything yet because I'm waiting on some answers from some vendors. But just to give you a heads up, um, payroll alone, normal average pre um, election, 10 precincts is about $14,100 per election. 15 precincts would be 24,400, so a $10,300 difference roughly. Um, Voting equipment, 14 tabulators right now is what we've got in the capital plan uh, for the new tabulators that will read the ranked choice voting ballot. We've 
priced out 14 tabulators and that's $80,300. And to have that go up to accommodate 15 precincts, we're looking at, I get, um, asked for 20 tabulators and that would be $114,000. So a $33,700 difference to purchase new equipment. Um, and then we'd have like one-time costs for supplies like ballot boxes, um, election supply trunks, et cetera. So those will be one-time costs. And that came out to be roughly about you know, $2,500. And then um, each time there's an election, we have ballot printing and coding. And the ballot itself um, for 10 precincts for the printing and coding is 3336. And for 15 precincts, it would be 3708, so a $372 difference. The only thing I'm waiting on now is um, programming for the, the handicap voter assist terminals. Um, we program those flashcards that assist people in voting their, in marking their ballots. It's a marking machine. Um, one good thing is I checked with the Secretary of State's office. They're checking to see if they have supplies. But if they don't, um, we can share because if polling places, if there were two in one, we can share one unit amongst two precincts. So we wouldn't necessarily have to even get new equipment. So that cost would be the same. So. Well, thanks. I think, okay. I think that will be important to share with the council, like as we go forward with the proposal. Oh, and I will say um, just relatedly to, I did um, ask Mindy Dom recently just about, you know, given the fact that there is more early voting now and so on, if the legislature, if anybody at the legislature has proposed increasing the maximum number of residents per precinct, like beyond 4,000 people. And I never heard back from her on that, but I mean, that would be a question, you know, to ask at the legislative level. Because I, I would think long-term they might change it, but it might not but be a I, did, I think at this point- it doesn't, Definitely not within our time frame, but like, you it's know- It's not for, within our time frame. And yeah, again, exactly. I think the issue about the 15 precincts uh, or 10, I think at this point, we have certain commitment to go with 10 precincts as long as we are told that that would not be allowed, right? I think that's the, under the premise that we are working mm -hmm. is that we agree. are working with the 10, 10 precincts unless um legal counsel tell us you are too close or the state tells us you are too close you are right. not allowed so that's uh that that's the basic assumption that we're having i mean i think so the cost is informative yeah, but at some definitely. point it would be beyond our the decision is not um if we are told you cannot have 10 at some uh, during this process then that's it mm -hmm. uh, there's not much we can do i mean i i was sort of I mean, just in terms of how the local election district and review committee works is like, I doubt if, if our proposal like has the support of the council that they would want to like micromanage what's happening at the local level in case they had like super concerns about the way we created our precincts and what well, they call them wards, but our districts, right? I just like, I mean, there's 351 municipalities in the state and I don't think that they'd want to get involved in local decision making, unless they thought that it was a major issue, okay. personally. But I, I forgot we had one email that could have counted as public comment. I don't know. It was added this afternoon. Oh. Um, so I, I'm, I'm bringing it to the, everybody's attention because it was added this afternoon when we got as soon as we got it, we added to the packet. Um, I think maybe that. Um, so I just want to make it, uh, make everybody aware about this email. Can you just do a re quick recap of what the email said? So the, the message was from, um, I think Mandy Jo I think Haneke. Mandy, Mandy jo Haneke. I want to say her name properly. Uh, and essentially is that it's asking that we, when we making the precincts, we also think how the districts we would be built. So this asking because um, the district building, what they're considering is that the district building has an impact on the maps and uh, how voters perceive the maps. Um, so to go beyond the precincts and look at also mm -hmm. put information about district building, how would each map have an impact on the possibilities of district building? That's my... Okay, thanks. Okay, so, okay. So 
Yes. Any other announcements? Is it Mike? Yeah. So I, I what I, my my taking my interpretation was of the maps that we have published in the map in the packets is I think Mandy Joe is saying, hey, don't just show the precincts and the statistics there, but also show the districts oh. and the statistics for those districts and also show the, the, the racial demographics. And she was also asking for age yeah, but we don't have information, that. but that information is only available as estimated data right. from um, 2019. 2019. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not comfortable personally mixing and matching data sets. I don't think that's the smart thing to do. So, um, I mean, we can do it if we decide to, but I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, um, I mean, my take on it and and how we proceed. Though I think we're getting into the other items. Yeah, is that we decide. Thing. We basically agree on the precincts, and then we move ahead with, and look at like different options for the districts. But go ahead. I, mean, I actually don't agree with that. But oh. I think we can talk about that later. Definitely. Yeah, we should talk I, about I that later. I wanted to. I, I was. I remember about the email, and I wanted to bring it up. Okay, so, uh, so the so we have a general updates. Um, I think part of all of this is part of the general updates. Tracy, you had asked to put this uh, the item separate as general updates. No oh, I mean, that, I think that was before when we didn't okay. have any. I mean, it's okay. a little bit redundant with announcement. We can maybe take off one of the items or something. Okay. It's just... So the update with the communication of the state, um, that's a separate item. This was, I, I sent, oh, Craig, you have a... Well, I, I saw that Tammy had her hand up and, and we keep on talking over each other. Can okay. we just put our hands up when we, want, when we want to talk and you can recognize whomever? Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, Marlene? You. Um, I don't know if anyone else had difficulties looking, reading some of the documents in today's packet. I had difficulties with two of the PDFs. It told me that I had to get a Adobe Reader, which I had, and I mean, I'm working with Macs and Apple products, but I couldn't open them. Um, it was the Mandy Joe email, and then it was the email from the state. Am I? Yeah, we did talk about person? that. Okay. Well, no. No, Peggy. So Marilyn, yes, we were talking about that before you came in. Okay. Lots of us are having that issue. And okay. Sue is gonna see if there's an easy fix for that. Um, but I can tell you what I did to get around it, which mm -hmm. is that, um, cause I also had Adobe installed. Um, I downloaded the document, opened Adobe and then opened the document. Okay, I wasn't able to download the document, but um, I fortunately my husband was able to do it right. He printed them. Okay. It was frustrating because okay. I was able to open the others. Yeah. Yes, it is frustrating. Yeah, but I think you have to have Adobe. So if you don't have Adobe. No, I've got Acrobat. I mean, I've got the reader. And okay. All, you know, so that was the, like, yeah, I have this. Okay. It asked me to install the app. And I realized afterwards, you know, I already have those apps. Who's got I think the music? I think it's a back compatibility issue with a uh, new version versus old version and how it's saved. Um, okay. But maybe not. Uh, Tammy? Um, I just wanted to say that in the um, meeting packet, I don't see um, Peggy Shannon's map in there. And then I also see that Mandy Joe's letter does not mention Peggy's map. And so I, I, I guess I'm requesting that Peggy's map be added to the materials for this meeting. Okay. Uh, I see Irina and Tracy's maps, but I don't see Peggy's. Okay, I'll do that right now. Yeah, so that was an oversight. So the, the maps that are in the package are new maps, are different versions, not the ones from last week. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, so but, but, yes, but we can bring in the, all the maps, the, the Peggy's map from last week as well. Yeah, I just think it would be good if you're going to have them just have all of them so that okay. it doesn't look like that one was left off. Yeah, I'm sorry for the oversight. Thank you. Yep. Um, so based on uh, the conversations that we had last week, I sent an email to um, the state requesting, asking two questions, whether with this, the maps that we had last week, whether they would be suitable considering 
and um, they would be suitable and whether the issue about being close to 4,000 would be an issue. Uh, we only got um, responses regarding to the shape of some of the precincts, particularly precinct five in the map I had, um, but no response regarding the number of people in each precinct. So I sent it again, focusing on that question, but I haven't heard back. So I re -ask, I only focus, I focus only on that question, um, but I haven't heard back from the state. Um, so based, based on the uh, comment that we got about the shape of one of the precincts, that's why I created a new, a new map, a new version, trying to leave it address, maybe address a bit of the issue with one, the map I had created, okay? And I hope to hear from the state um, regarding the numbers. But I think the, the issue was they didn't want to commit and say, yes, everything's okay or no, they won't. They say they don't decide that it's gonna go to another group. So they only can advise um, and maybe raise some flags, but that's it. That was my take on the issue. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the power is with that um, advice, yeah. like the districting review committee, right? So it's not with the... Um... Yeah. And with, um, that, uh, Peggy? Only that, you know, we have followed the rules yeah. and we've sent in two maps and nobody said anything about there being an issue for number number of people. Yeah. I think we should put it to rest. Yeah, so that, that's, that's, that's also, is also, I also ask them if at some point we, there's another chance to send them the maps to, for, for comments before, because we don't want them to be rejected. Um, and I, again, they did not comment on that issue. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Yes, Mike. So that is something that and they were mentioned in a, in a reply. I can't remember if it was from Michelle Tassinari or not, but they mentioned that we have the ability to participate in the, um, what is it, the LEDRC? Is that it? Yeah. Is that the acronym, Sue? Yeah. LEDRC. Yes, in the LEDRC um, hearing, and you know, if they have questions, we have the ability to make our case. Um, so I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. I don't know. I imagine that it would be you know between the hours of nine and three um, during a workday, um, but that might be something that we want to think about at some point. You know, if we get a hearing date and we as a committee want to participate and make our voice heard, we sh should maybe at least have a representative there to, to make our case for why our district, why our numbers are so close to 4,000 and things and like that. And the shape. Uh, yeah, I think, and shape. I, think, I think we should make an effort. I don't know, probably we don't even know which month it's gonna be. Well, um, we will decide, I think, but yeah. I mean, I think also our report could speak to that too, right? That yeah. we explain like right. why, if anything looks quirky or something. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, um, the next item is about upcoming meetings and um, timeline. So I sent uh, when it's good Paul um, last week, hoping uh, to see to try to schedule the next meetings. And I have very few responses, but it seems that at least we can have two meetings scheduled. One is on a Tuesday, the September twenty eighth, at six to eight p.m. Um, I'm sorry, Mike. I think. The only major issue is that I don't know if you can make it. Yeah, I'm muted. What day was this? September 28th. And what time is this? 6 p.m. Okay. Tuesday, September 28th, 6 p.m. Okay. I'll make it. I'll make it work. I might be late like I was today, but I'll Thank be you. there. And then Tuesday, October 5th, 6 to 8 p.m. Peggy? Um, only I noticed, I, I don't know if anyone else got the email from uh, Heck that she is not able to make any Tuesday meetings. And I appreciate that, that we may not be able to schedule around her, but I just yeah. want that noted. 
Yeah, I just replied to her email. Um, okay. I'm trying based on the when it's good. And then... Um, well, can you just repeat what the next one is, the one after the 28th is? Tuesday, October 5th, again, 6 to 8 p.m. And then, and then we run into trouble the following week um, because we were not finding, I think the only time, again, it was a Tuesday, I only got four responses, so I, I'm trying to, I'm hoping that other people can make it. Um, that Tuesday, the earliest that we could start is 7 p.m. And I wanted to make sure before saying that time, let's go ahead. We can, um, I know that I was one of the people who couldn't meet earlier, but if everybody can meet at six, I can adjust that. And I'm gonna go or, running, I'm gonna go run and get my kid and then I'll be right back. Okay, or if not, it could be, Wednesday, but Wednesday, the October 13th is the day that we have to submit the material. So the material for uh, the council has to be by Wednesday, October 13th. That's the day they wanted to have, they need to have it. So that's why I wanted to have a meeting just in case last minute, I wanted to have it on October 12th, if possible. Okay. So if people would, if everybody would be able to make it at 6 p.m., that would be great. Maybe it's a short meeting, maybe we finish before the material, but having a meeting before we have to submit it to the council would be good to have. Okay. So we arranged that the next one is October 12th, as again, 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, and hopefully we don't have to make any changes after submitting to the council on the when they go over it after they think. Okay. The other um, the things of the timeline is I put the document that they have a question that they they send us about what's the procedure that we have to follow who has to vote and I think. We should look, everybody should look at the report because I think at some point we're gonna to have to start working sooner than later on the report that we have to submit with all. To justify, we're gonna to have to be justifying all the decisions that we have made uh, in creating the maps. Uh, so um, I'm gonna be asking for volunteers to help draft the, the report and maybe get started as we go along um don't wait to the last minute uh to start writing does anybody have any question about the timeline mm -hmm. tammy sorry i just i just want to make sure that i have the time and dates right for the next couple of meetings so the next meeting would be the 21st at 5 30 is that correct um that was sent at one point. I just want to make sure yeah, that I'm yeah. confirming. And then the 28th at six. Six. Okay. And I mean, there's two up. And then October 5th at sixth. Yes. And October um, 12th at six. Yes. And then the 13th is when we need to report. Yes. Okay. All right. Just want to confirm. Thank you. Um, uh, okay, so the next item, it's about um, rules and regulations. Um, I have one item I would like to bring up. Um, I was, we are going so fast with the timelines, we only have a week, and we, it's usually when the work gets done, it's over the weekend. I'm sorry, Mike, he gets to put the maps together on Monday or sometimes even the weekend. But I don't know if people would be okay to ask that emails be sent, that if there's public comment that is gonna be sent by email to be sent by Monday night or the night before the meeting. So there's at least, this email that we got today was in the afternoon. So it was very little turnaround so for everybody to see. We are trying to get as much material before Monday, actually to put in the package, but, um, Maybe we could clarify that we hope to get 
public comment by Monday night so it can be uploaded in time um, to the package. I, I don't want to say we won't incorporate it, but we're going to make an effort to try. It's, it's better for everybody to read if we can get it in before. Okay. Okay. Um, packet material other than maps, I think we that's our next item. And I think we've been untidy, been discussing some things along the way. Um, some things that are the documents that Tracy put on the package, but she's not. Tracy, can you talk? Um, she put some, she has to upload some information regarding um, who has authority, yes, Sue. So. Yeah, I can talk for her um, because she asked me to put it on there. Um, so basically she, um, just let me go there. It's in the reference materials. Oh, hold on one sec. It's MGL here, it, yeah, it's in the reference materials for all meetings, it's under that board or that packet folder. Um, and it's MGL chapter 54 sections one, two, and four, which is what it states in our charge that we are having to abide by. And so that's what um, defines how to re-precinct and all of the different parameters. I think, and I think she wanted to put it in there because it says no more than 4,000 inhabitants. That was her main purpose, but so it's in there for reference. Okay. And the other material that I mentioned in the past is uh, the frequently asked questions regarding representing that uh, I mentioned that I tells all the steps that we should be taking and how, and it here it talks about um, the LEDRC um, that they're gonna be voting after we submit uh, they're going to accept or not accept our marks after we submit them. So we might have, our marks might have, we might have to change them if they don't accept our maps at a later stage. That's my take of the document. But the town has to vote and there is a standard material. Mike, do you have the material? What do we have to provide the town council that they have to vote on? They say they came in the packet. But what do you mean? I'm sorry. So they have they have a standard wording for what has to be voted on. Hmm. I'm not familiar with that. Um, okay. If you can track with the material that you got, um, what they say on this uh, in this frequently asked questions, they say that in the package case a standard wording of what needs to be voted on. Okay. The motion, the motion. So I think that we're gonna need this to provide it to the town council when we submit the material. All right, I'll look at it. Okay, thank you. I will okay. help, Mike. Any other comments thank you. regarding the material? No. So our next item is maps. Um, so right now on the table, we have, I believe, three maps with 10 precincts, 10 possible maps with 10 precincts, the one that Peggy made, um, the new version, the version I sent, to, there are actually four maps, the version I sent to the state that they had raised some objections to one of the precincts, the new version I created, and the new version that Tracy created, so they are actually three maps that we could consider and we could make changes. Um, one of the items I would like to see based on the information that Mike put together about some demographics is, is any of this map um, splitting communities um, when we are creating the maps. The idea would be not to split communities and have, that's part of one of the districting norms uh, that we have to make sure that we are not splitting communities about, communities of interest. 
Um, the question I have for everybody is, do we consider students, so because one community of interest is students, right? So do we consider that and we group students in one district or in precincts or, um, so to which state, to which, yeah, Peggy, so um, I try to put the words, to which length do we consider students a community of interest and we try to group them together? Peggy? Um, so I, to speak to that, I would say that students in our town um, have a lot of diversity um, because we're not talking about just yeah. undergraduates. Um, we're talking about graduate students. Many of them are from other countries. Um, uh, so, so yes, I, I think it's a really good question, um, but I am not. I am less concerned about that community of interest than some of the others. Yeah. Um, okay. So, but I. Go ahead. Okay, now uh, Marilyn. I was also thinking about students because, um, you know, they are a diverse group, and it's going to become increasingly diverse if you look at the trends at the university. But it's also a very transient group. So the students who are here now are not necessarily, you know, a, there's a lot of turnover. So that it's going to be mm -hmm. a different set of students, particularly in the residence halls, than are here this year or who were here in 2020. And as Peggy said, you know, we've got graduate students, we've got graduate students with families who may have more of an investment in the community because they have kids in schools. So I think we, we do have to consider them to be a diverse group in, in many ways. Um, no. rather than lumping them all together because they're they're different and they would you know for many reasons they're different other than for m many of them it's they're a transient population okay no i i, I wanted to put it out i don't say in one way or the other i wanted to to have I think one one of the issues that we're going to have is when we are writing the report. I think we're going to have to justify when we are building the precincts whether we are splitting the students, some of the students, because we cannot we could have a two or three precincts that are just students, right? Uh, we could draw the things, but I think everybody has been making an effort not to have precincts that are just students as much as we can. Um, so that's that's the that's the the, the I think we're, we're going to have to have some language to put in the report why we build the prisons the way we do them. Peggy. Um, so I wanted to speak. I, I agree with you on that. I want to speak to something that Tracy brought up earlier, um, and I think now is the time to do that, um, which is that we have been we've been drawing these maps with ten precincts, and we're maybe getting ready to discuss them, but I really think at this point, we need to start thinking about districts. Um, so, and actually what Mandy Jo Haneke was saying kind of feeds into that as well. Um, I, the, uh, in terms of protecting communities of interest or um, splitting things, the, it, it's the voting power in Amherst that's even, that's, that's important. Yes, the districts, I mean, the precincts are important too, but they're not nearly as important as the districts. So I feel like what we should be doing at this point is considering what our priorities are in terms of how we draw the districts. And I actually have eight criteria <laughs> that I think that we could discuss, you know, we can think about whether they, you know, what, what our priorities around them. Um, and then use that looking at the maps we can use those criteria to say, okay, do any of these maps work with the kinds of districts that we wanna have? Um, so for example, that, like with the Arena's maps, it, it was clear that you were making a lot of effort to distribute the, the students throughout into every precinct. But actually we don't need to do that. What we need to do is, um, because we can combine two precincts into a district, we don't have to worry so much about making sure that there are students in every precinct. We wanna make sure there are students in every district. Um, so, so that's why I, I think at this point, we could look at the what's important to us around districts and then apply that to the maps. So would you like to hear my criteria? Go ahead. Oh, 
Tracy um, and then Peggy, you go the criteria. You want to answer? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I think could we? I mean, I think your criteria are important. Um, I guess I was. I mean, my thinking about it was that we would do something similar to the way the um, the Charter Commission did it. Is that? I mean, I do. I do agree with your point that the precincts matter, you know, in terms of creating districts. And one of the things that I think each of us who created the maps were doing is we were trying to make sure, for example, that there were like different connected points so that we could have different options for the districts. Um, I mean, I was, my thinking on it was that, you know, we do have three maps um, and we can, you know, we can each speak to the maps that were created. Um, and I know Peggy, like you had said that your map was somewhat based on the current pre the current precincts. And I think that I based my map um, predominantly on the current precincts and also the um, looking at what you had done too um, and sort of comparing. Um, and I ran some statistics in terms of like under your maps or you know, under my maps, like how many of the census blocks change precincts. Um, and just, you know, in terms of, and you could also look at that like at a district level, like at a district level, you know, under different district proposals, how many are changing districts um, and how many are consistent and, you know, are they sort of making sense? I mean, people don't, you know, I noticed like after the last meeting, I noticed that, you know, some of the ways that districts, um, that precincts had been drawn, like for example, that a number of the elected counselors who are currently on the town council would be changing precincts. I mean, not that that's like a major factor for us, but even in terms of getting council support and also public support, I mean, people, they, uh, they often resist change. And, you know, if we're doing something super different like that might be harder to get approved. Um, so, so I was, I mean, I was thinking about it, like I know with the charter commission, what Mandy Jo did is she took the current precincts, the precincts that were there then and that she came up with like the eight different, she actually did it and I, she did it, I think with like colored pencils or crayons or something. She had like a blank map of Amherst and she drew, and I think that was in one of our initial packets, she drew the eight different configurations you could have to create the five districts in Amherst. Um, it was very low GIS just to show like the different options and so on and so I, so part of my thinking was that we could follow a similar procedure for us where we, it is important, you know, in terms of the way precincts are defined, it is important to have commonality because, you know, over time the districts can always change, like the next chart, you know, the next DAB could always change the district. So I was thinking that we could do something similar that if there's a version of the 10 precinct map that we agree with, or like we could use that as a starting place and then do something similar to what Mandy Jo did in terms of coming up with all the different potential configurations of districts and then deciding which to pursue using things like your criteria and so on. So I don't feel like we're super far apart. I just was starting like with the districts, I mean, with the precincts as the building block initially. So. I wanted to make a comment, this is as a, a I think I took completely different approach to Peggy and Tracy to building the maps. Uh, my thought, I, and then we can go back to Peggy to, to your criteria. When I built the maps, my thought was the previous precincts were built when there was a different type of government in town, right? All the precincts, so that was when it was 10 minute town meetings and what was important was the precincts and, and the districts came later. Right now, right now we have a different form of government. So what usually matters for elected for elected uh, officials is the districts, uh, but the underlying there are the precincts. But I'm not so attached to keeping everything the same because the form of government has changed in Amherst um, considerable. So I think that it ha that's a perspective that we. Uh, Yes, there's some attachment, but everything's going to change because many census blocks has changes for many people that are going to change and the boundary is going to have to change. So I would not, I'm not as attached to things because the form of government has changed in, in MS. Um, Marilyn and then 
Peggy, I guess, going back to your criteria. Yes. So I think I, I agree with you on the precincts, but I think we do have to be mindful of the districts because that does define, you know, our representation and um, I mean, to some extent, the precincts define where people vote. And I know that for some people, if they vote in a different location, that could be problematic for them. But I think we probably want the districts to be as similar as possible to the districts in the last census that was proposed by the last redistricting committee. Um, because I think one of the, the guidelines is that you want it as best, as close as possible to conform to the former bo district boundaries. That's not, that is not one of the... Well, I think actually the one of the criteria used by the last committee was that the redistricting would minimize changes to the existing precinct boundaries, which is possible. But, but again, it was the same type of government, right? The precincts but, were- But I'm, I'm, what I'm suggesting is not necessarily precincts, but districts, since that is, that is how we're defined now. Okay. Tracy and then Peggy. And so um, to Marilyn's point, like, so, right, so that was one of the criteria of the 2011 uh, Districting Advisory Board to follow the precincts um, from previous, from the year 2000, that were created in 2001. Um, and so I think, um, and that we could say that that is one of our main criteria too. I think it is uh, something to consider. I don't know if I would say it was like the only thing to consider, like the priority to consider. But one thing is if like, if each districting advisory board says we wanna follow the boundaries as close as the last districting board, then, you know, over time. So even, so if 2011 group was following the districts that were set in, uh, sorry, the precincts that were set in 2001, and now we're saying we want to follow the districts, the precincts, sorry, that were set in 2011, like over 20 years or even a longer period of time, we're saying we want to perpetuate the precincts as they were created earlier. And so, I, I mean, I, I don't want to, I mean, the reason I ran some of the numbers is I don't want to completely upend everything and create completely different precincts. Um, but I think it is worth noticing noting too that you know in the last 10 or 20 or 30 years like however long we've had these same precincts that um you know that there have been changes in amherst you know in terms of where there's growth in terms of diversity and so on like that so i don't and and it has shifted you know certain neighborhoods and things like that so i don't want to be completely wedded to those earlier versions um but i i mean in terms of the map you know, where, I mean, one of the things I was thinking about is, you know, if I, I don't really like them, some of those long precincts, the ones the state were asking about that Irene had created, where you'll have a district that will go, I mean, sorry, a precinct that will go all the way from like, you know, the south end of Amherst, like Bay Road, like all the way up to the center of Amherst. And, you know, I'm, you know, if I lived in that zone, not just in terms of where I vote, but also just in terms of who's representing me because the population density is so much greater in the center of town. Like in, if, I live, if I live on Bay Road, I want somebody sort of in my neighborhood or my part of town to be my representative. And so if you have those really elongated dis precincts, then it's possible that people who are running my elected officials will only be from the center of town. And that could be the true with any of these elongated districts. And so then what happens to the voice in the town government of the people who are in those other areas? So I think it is important to have um, certain geographies that we're making sure are represented in the precincts and the districts that we draw. For example, like North Amherst and South Amherst and things like that. I think it is important to have some of those there. Okay. Uh, I, I've got to agree with most of what Tracy says. That one thing that's happened uh, over the last ten and twenty years is there there have been shifts 
in the population, there have been shifts as far as where the students are living. They've been essentially moving out of the university as the university increases the number of students, uh, but doesn't increase the amount of housing. Mm -hmm. And consequently, there's, there's a student population in many areas in the, in the town that wasn't there 10 years ago. So we've got to be cognizant of who's living where. And you know, as far as the, the districts are concerned with the precincts, there needs to be a way to make those um, districts so they're fairly flexible in terms of how, which precincts they, they encompass. And it may not be the same as what they are now at all. And, but, but a lot of that is due to the population changes. We've, you know, we've got to be cognizant of that. So Peggy, what uh, whatever you was well, going back. Okay, okay. Uh, we so can I'm do gonna... the like I saw the cat. I'm sorry. Last semester, my students were all was bringing the cats to class. <laughs> no, no, it's fine actually because um, I'm going to read my criteria. I have eight of them. Um, some many will sound familiar to you because we've been talking about them all along. And my point is that as we look at these precinct maps, we are already using these criteria to choose among them. Um, and so that's why I think we need to talk about the criteria first, because we need to decide, is it more important to, you know, distribute students evenly, or is it more important to consider the fact that some of the um, uh, housing complexes are, were undercounted, that sort of thing. So, so let me read the criteria and then we can, um, and so you'll, I think you'll understand why I feel like we need to talk about these before we decide on which map is our best map. Um, okay, so one, no tails or fingers. That's what the state says. Two, um, can't result in dilution of minority group members' votes. State says that also. Um, three, we don't want to break up neighborhoods. I think we all know that. So many, all of our maps break up some neighborhoods, um, but we want to keep that to a minimum, partly because of what Tracy just said, right? You want to be represented by somebody from your neighborhood. Um, four, we don't want to disenfranchise marginalized communities. So if there are already communities that are mar marginalized in this town, we don't want to make it worse. Um, five, we want to distribute students and permanent residents as evenly as possible. This comes back to Irena's point is, um, I'm, I'm proposing these criteria, not necessarily because I believe all of them, but I think it's, these are all things that we've talked about um, or need to talk about. Um, six, uh, preserving current districts. That's a possible criterion. Um, seven, give a boost to districts that were especially undercounted. So our first couple of meetings when we were worried about whether all these different places in town that we knew were undercounted, do we want to consider that? Um, we thought so at the time, um, but now do we know better or not? Um, and finally, do we want to give a boost to districts that contain communities that have been historically less represented. So there are communities in our town that traditionally have had less of a voice in our government. Um, do we want to consider those communities and try to make sure that they're not, that if anything, those um, districts have fewer voters. Um, so the people who do vote have a greater voice. Okay. Can we comment on Peggy's? Please. Or what do we want? <laughs> okay. Um, I thought I think your list is really good. Um, I th I think one thing is um, with your fifth criteria about I don't think it's just students versus permanent residents. You also have other more transient populations. You know, as Marilyn was saying, students are not just a monolith. That you also have graduate students and you have people in low income housing and things like that. So. I mean, you can, and I, I mean, some of those post populations are most transient too. So I wouldn't just make it students versus everybody else. And, and also there are students who are really invested in our community. Um, and I guess with the idea of preserving the current districts, like I don't feel that wedded to that personally. Like when I go back at what the charter commission looked at, um, I mean, I feel like there were, you know, they did the analysis and they did the analysis based somewhat on voter turnout in different areas, how competitive races were and things. And they were trying to 
they were trying to make sure that different groups would be represented too. Um, but looking at their analysis, there were some other pairings that they could have come up with that were pretty close, you know, in meeting their criteria too, and they decided to choose one model. So I'm not, I'm not sure we have to choose exactly the same approach. Um, so one thing I've been thinking about, you know, just in terms of the different, the variations of the different um, precincts maps is one thing is like, is, you know, we talk about the different parts of town and including different voices, but do people feel like if we were to combine certain precincts geographically, like are people more tied to being in the same, as in creating districts are, is it more important to have people in districts with like people, like to have precincts of like characteristics? You know, for example, like could we create a minority majority district or something like that, where you have like two diverse districts together, I mean, two diverse precincts together in a district um, versus like say, you know, we have parts of town that are more rural. So does it, even if those rural parts aren't adjacent you know aren't super close to each other like does it make sense to have you know the higher density uh precincts be together and like the more rural be together too i mean it's it's all about like how people identify like is it more important that south amherst be together or anyway so th those are some things i was thinking about i i have a comment regarding that as a as a member not as a chair I think that has an impact on the voter turnout has an impact because if you have our representation in the government government right now, we have uh, two representatives per district and we some, if we group only by common interests. So for example, that would be maybe two persons that I have majority of permanent residents, whereas then we're gonna have uh, a district that is going to be majority non-permanent residents, right? That they have less vested on the local government. And we might end up having no representatives. This is hypothesis. We might end up having uh, no representatives for one district that is majority non-permanent residents. That might be an, a big assumption on my side. Uh, but that's something to consider. D has had hand raised. So I, I guess I'm asking for a definition of what's considered permanent resident. Um, and, you know, someone kind of defined transient as being more student. But um, since you're using these terms to define precincts and, and then eventually districts, could you uh, flush out what do you mean by permanent? My take on permanent is usually year-round residents that they have a vested interest in the community. Um, sometimes students, uh, as somebody was saying, students um, are here nine months and they might not come back. They most likely maybe they are living completely different precinct next time. Uh, that's, that's what I'm saying transient population, somebody that doesn't have a... So I, I guess I want to just ask for clarity as I'm, as I'm listening, because um, I, although I do appreciate Peggy uh, providing well, these criteria, um, and then Tracy trying to, to ask some critical questions, it might be of use to also have some working definitions because on one hand you're talking about dividing the precincts geographically uh, in some way and then on another based on certain assumptions of who these populations are uh, transient um, you know uh, equal to student population or is transient equal to uh, graduate students? Is transient equal to, you know, uh, renters as opposed to um, homeowners? So um, I think as we go through this this type of conversation, and you're trying to figure out precincts 
you know, it would help to have some of these working definitions and be careful in terms of the language. And it's not like I'm policing the language. It's just that I think it's confusing. What do you actually mean by a transient population and trying to divide that up precinct wise? And how does that correspond then to your geographic uh, specifications for your mapping? Um, and likewise, permanent populations. How does that correspond to, where does that look, where is that on the map? Because it's based on certain assumptions. And I think we had talked about this before and I'd asked for, you know, like maybe Mike to provide um, some way of understanding um, homeowners as opposed to renters, because you're, you're again using these assumptions instead of some data as to who lives in these areas. Students, if it's a dorm, we could say, okay, that's a dorm. But when it comes to the rental population, homeowners who, who are renting homes as well, then it gets really confusing and basing precincts on that instead of just looking at voters in general. Um, I think you're gonna run into a problem where you could say, well, you're you're assuming things and then you're going to be uh, splitting up these precincts perhaps to the detriment of their voting power. Peggy? Um, yes, I actually, I, I'm really glad you said that, Dee. And also I think Craig said something related, which is that we're, it's one thing to look at the student population that's living in the residence halls around UMass. And it's something entirely different to think about um, where the students are living around town and who else might be living there as well. So in um, all the various apartment complexes, many of them have a large student population, which would appear no different from a lot of the students that live in the residence halls. Um, and then they also have um, lots of other different kinds of people. So I think that when we think about um, trying to distribute the students in the residence halls, which I, I feel like every map that we are considering made an attempt to do that to some degree. We didn't, or at least I didn't also know enough to think about, well, what does that mean about the various um, other populations around town? So. Can we, so to look at the, the uh, so do we have about voter registration statistics by precincts? If yeah. that could inform us. In voter, know, in voter turnout and things like that, right? I think yeah. voter registration, I don't know if voter turnout, I, I don't know, but at this voter registration, that would be an indication of transient, somebody that does not even register with the town to register in town. I don't know if it's a good definition. I'm, I'm asking <laughs> Tracy and Sue, I think that yeah. Sue and uh, Tracy. So, I mean, I think one, you know, one thing with, with our precincts, and I, I think we don't really have a lot of choice with this, um, is that our, the greatest population density is in the dorms, like particularly the UMass dorms, but the dorms are not neighborhoods. Right, and so each year, students will change dorms. I mean, and I know I've been an election worker, right? And it's actually pretty unfortunate that the town census is done in the spring and the elections are in the fall and by then the students have moved. And so those are not, I mean, those are, you know, groups of people living together, but they do not have a neighborhood type identity because the next year they'll be in a different dorm. As unless I don't know how many students opt to stay in the same dorm like year after year and say like this is my identity I'm a Southwest resident but I don't think it's that many. Um, and so those are different than the other areas with population density, um, like such as the housing complexes and like other neighborhoods and I mean you could have tenants there who live there for years, right? I mean, some of them are students, but then some of them aren't, and some of them are long-term residents in terms of living, I don't know if anybody's permanent, but in terms of living in Amherst like year after year and being engaged 
in Amherst as a community. And so I feel like we do need to balance it somewhat, um, just in terms of that. So, I mean, I think, you know, in terms of our definition, we do want to look, we do want to focus on neighborhoods and also, and also look to a certain extent about engagement, right? Like if there are certain precincts or districts currently, like that really do not necessarily have as much engagement in terms of voter turnout or even registration in terms of being actively involved. I mean, I know that there's reasons that that's the case, but at the same time, we don't want to set up certain districts to sort of fail and not be able to even find people to run and things like that. So it is a balance, I think, between, I mean, I had brought up the issue just about clustering like similar types of precincts together, like similar demographic precincts together, just because I was wondering if that would give more of a voice. Like, for example, I've been concerned ever since the precincts were created originally about South Amherst a little bit, and that um, precinct seven was matched with precinct eight. So to me, like precinct seven, they vote at Crocker Farm, it includes all of East Hadley Road, it includes, you know, some other apartment complexes and so on. And, and they have lower voter turnout because they have people who are not, who do not necessarily stay in Amherst as long um, and have other reasons for not being as engaged as other people. But then to have it matched with precinct eight, which is like voted the Munson and includes Applewood and includes, I remember when we had town meeting in order to get elected, as a town meeting rep from precinct eight, you had to have hundreds of votes. You had to have like 300 or four. It was always crazy to me because I live in a downtown precinct and for me to get elected to town meeting, I had to have like five votes or six votes. And so I always wondered whether that was the best way to combine those two precinct seven and precinct eight. And would the, would the people who live in precinct seven be more empowered if they were matched differently. So that's always been a concern for me with the current precinct renderings. And so that was one of the things I was thinking about whether we would want to draw it differently. So, and then Marlene. So I was going to say two things. Um, yes, you can look back in the town records and see the voter turnout of all the different precincts, but traditionally in the last 15 years, precincts one, three, and 10 have the lowest turnout constantly. Yes. Um, two, six, seven, eight, and nine are always the highest and four and five are pretty good showing. But um, I can request through the um, state voter registration system at any point, a um, there's reports and there's extracts, but I can get like um, how many registered voters per precinct, if that would be helpful, you know, as of the moment I request it. So I can do that if that, if you think that would help. Yes. Yes. Okay. I think it gives us a, an idea. So it gives yeah. us a picture. Thank you. Marilyn. A couple of points um, and just something to think about. So when we look at these, these districts or precincts, um, you know, I live in a, neighbor, a residential neighborhood. It's primarily owner occupied housing, but we have a number of kids who, you know, they're counted in the census, but they aren't old enough to vote. We have a number of residents who are international and have not um, have green cards, but at this mm -hmm. point have no intent of voting in Amherst. We have residents who have moved recently to the area and are not registered to vote. And we also have a handful who are, have been here for a while, but because of their work situation are registered in another state. So, um, you know, it's really hard to say what in, in there, in many of these cases, they're engaged in the community because they have children in the schools or will have children in the schools. So there's an involvement, but not, they're not voting. Um, and they can't serve as elected officials, right? Serve. If they're not, yeah. And whereas if you look at the student population, they are all eligible to vote. They are all eligible to run for election. Most of them, no, I shouldn't say all, because again, we have students who are non-residents and um, do, are not US citizens, but um, well, I can't even say the majority are registered to vote. 
I mean, they registered to vote in other communities and that we don't necessarily know. I guess we would know that from based on the number of students registered here. But do we know that or this is anecdotal, Marilyn, from what no, you're, you're right. sharing? Who's voting um, and who's not from your antidote there? See, we don't really no, know. I don't think it would be, I mean, I don't know what we had got from Kentucky State and I don't know what the pound yet. I mean, you know, I don't, not everybody responds to the census. So I don't think we know. I mean, do we have a sense of how many I, I mean, there is people of non-voting age or in the community? So, me. so okay. Yes. Um, again, you can request that information. Um, if somebody responded on the census and listed their children on the census, we'd have it. But like you said, nobody, you know, not everybody responds to the census. It's not a complete listing whatsoever. And it's not a... I mean, some people have told me, for example, they won't list their children. Like, they just don't think it's the town's business about mm -hmm. kids. But... No, you can only use the, the data that you have with any survey. Uh, surveys are never 100%. So you, you utilize the data that was turned in, and you try to make uh, an educated uh, guess as we're all doing with the census data and trying to figure this out. But I think any and all of that would help to give a more complete picture is, is all I'm, I'm saying instead of just making assumptions about international students or international families and are they voting or not voting. Um, I don't think that's a, a, a good way to try to make this determination. Mike and then Peggy. Hey, I want to say, I don't know if it's my head or I'm hearing some lovely music in the background. Um, it's, it's very nice. Um, but yeah, we I, keep uh, hearing that somebody has music or something. Yeah. Um, but the second thing I wanted to mention, D. Um, so I did follow up with our team in town about the rental data that we talked about, I believe, two meetings ago. The problem is, is that we changed databases at the beginning of COVID <laughs> um, in, I believe like the spring of 2020. And so the last good rental data that we have is from 2018 to 2019. Um, 2019 to 2020, 2020 to 2021, it's, it's very incomplete. So the person who's in charge of the rental program said to me, you know, honestly, I wouldn't even rely on even that old stuff so i mean i can still produce it if you folks want it but it they they said that it was very incomplete um so whatever you guys want if you want it i'll produce it but there are big caveats about it so peggy and then i have a comment um so it, it seems i mean i've feel like I've really appreciated hearing all of this discussion. And I think we could probably talk about um, priorities for, for weeks, but we also have a map to draw. So yeah. I'm wondering if it might make sense at this point to look at the maps. And my request is that we be cognizant of the assumptions that we are taking in about our priorities as we do that. So if we look at a map or we, we try to draw um, precincts and um, that, I request that we, while as we do that, we think about what the districts would look like from those precincts and also what assumptions we're making um, or priorities we're holding um, as we make those choices. So for example, Tracy's point about putting district seven and district eight together, I think is a really good one. I would probably choose not to do that. I would probably choose to put district seven with Southwest, something like that, which to me gives more voting power to the people in district seven. Um, but other people may have other ideas. So I, but I'm asking that we all try to be aware of those as we go forward. Tracy and then. So I think, I mean, I think, I mean, my, you know, as I was saying earlier, I would like us to, you know, look as Peggy is saying, look at the precinct maps and think about the districts, but I would feel most comfortable not deciding on the districts for certain at this stage until we've we've come up with our precinct map and maybe not to the extent that Mandy Joe and the Charter Commission did, but we we look at different options and then we pull together some of the data in terms of diversity and what data, whatever data we do have 
and using the criteria that you're talking about, you know, are some of these districts, I mean, Mandy Jo pointed, made a couple comments about how the different, if you do do different matches, so I guess she tried to do different matches, but if we do different matches, like what the implications are and how it could affect the criteria. Um, and so, I mean, I, I, I would like the idea, I mean, maybe again, not trying like every single option, but maybe looking at just deciding on the precincts like roughly at this time first and then looking exploring different options for districts and and kind of researching those more before we make a decision like for example the thing about south amherst or something i'm not wedded to it either way it's just something i was thinking about so i i want to bring up something maybe none of the maps that we have currently have are the final maps i think one thing is can we display the three of them and based on the criteria we start talking about the three <coughs> options that we have right now at hand, whether they would fit some of these criteria items, which one would be more or less. Uh, and then um, just the first thing is to compare the three side by side and uh, so some are similar, some are different. And what are the pros and cons maybe of each of the maps as a starting point, Tracy? Um, so I. I, I don't recall exactly, but I feel like at the last meeting, right, that Peggy went and explained her map and um, and you had explained your map. But and, mine, I have and I would like to, yeah, I, I mean, I would like to also have an opportunity to just explain like how I created my map and like okay. maybe I did because, because Peggy's precincts, I mean, because Peggy's precincts and mine lined up more than yours and mine, because yours were so different than the current precincts. I did, you know, map like where Peggy and mine were the same and where they were different and so on. And so. So can we display the three of them? And I could explain some of those choices. Mike, do you think they're gonna fit next to each other? I'm working on that right now. <laughs> Thank you. That's why you pay me the big bucks. <laughs> Like we all have this big monitor like this in front of us, right? Yeah. I'm sure Mike has the biggest monitor or multiple, <laughs> right? If you have multiple screens, that can be tricky. On One, two. two, three, four. I have four. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. So it's going to be small on some people's screens, but this is, can you all see that? Three side by side by side? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's Irina's on the left, Peggy's in the middle, and Tracy's on the right. Okay, thank you. So, so I think, you know, regarding the one on the <clears throat> left, so Irina, can you explain like how you changed it from the last time a little bit and then? So the major changes were, I leave it at this, center where there's that white because that white are all zero so i left them oh, sure. because they, they could be connected to anyone uh there were concerns about pressing five that is the cream color maybe. this color yes right. uh, that was too long uh so i tried okay. to shorten it and try to keep communities as much as i could think communities of interest uh my so that was essentially what I changed. It was mainly change this one and rebalance everything so that they match. All I tried as much as possible. I think I explained before that I tried to the dorms try to distribute the dorms is as many in as many spacings as possible because I thought that would give us more options when building the districts to have a more balanced population. So I didn't want except. Uh, the green prison here, the center that has only that's only dorms, uh, and maybe the light violet just north that that's majority dorms, but have some other uh, complexes attached to it. Um, all the rest is a combination of balance between um, dorms and non dorms. That's what I, I try. Except again, uh, maybe the pink. This uses all, I made the effort of grouping, make sure that the complexes on East Hadley Road they were belonging to the same precinct. That was my, my thought because ah, okay. 
so I wanted to go in circles so there could be different matches um, trying to create as many possible combinations of that we could have different districts based on different criteria. So depending how you would group these ones, you could have very elongated or more wider and shorter depending how you group them. That was like uh, the blue could be much with the center of town or it could be much with uh, the, the Southwest person. That was my, my logic, um, okay. I had a big, I, I, I thought to remember that um, particularly on the southeast and center of town was where there was much bigger voter um, turnout. Um, so I wanted, um, I had a view, I thought if it would, they were split, they would have more voices because they would have. Uh, if they don't have only one representative, two representatives, is their own or group in the same district that they might have a bigger voice in the government. Maybe that's not the way to. So can we just, so in terms of how far north you're at these southern, these long southern districts yeah. go, so they go, Pretty, so Mike could yeah. just explain. So that, is that Strong Street? How far yes, north is that? This yes, this is, so this peach color goes all the way to Strong Street. Okay. Yes. Yeah. This goes triangle to okay. Prey Street. The purple goes to Prey Street, right in the middle of downtown. <laughs> yeah, so that one is a pretty long one, I must confess. But population down there is very... Uh, the last census no, blocks covers all the whole South Amherst and it's 178 people, I believe. Right, yeah. Okay, so that's why... I was... Okay. okay. <laughs> I cannot see if anybody has raised hands. Uh, Tracy? So I, I appreciate what you were trying to do with this map in terms of diversity of the population and, you know, making sure the districts had both students and non other populations. But I, to me, I mean, there are a few parts of your map that seem somewhat similar to current precincts, like some of the North Amherst sections you know, in some of the West sections, but I, I mean, and this is not critical of your map. I just don't, I think that I don't feel like this would be right. I think it would be too radically different from our current precincts. And I still don't feel that comfortable with having the districts. I'm not crazy about these large South Amherst blobs, but I, I don't like the idea of these districts that go from so far to South, like right into the center of town and and also the idea that their elected officials or could come from like the center of town and not be representing South Amherst. But I mean, that might just be me and so I don't know. I just, I mean, the other two maps are more similar, but I mean, it just, if we're trying to think about the future and, you know, um, getting public support for it and getting council support, I think that the map, it's very innovative. I just think it might be too much for us to consider. And I don't see it passing the way it is. So. I, I have concern. So I I did change the northern part. My concern is about voter turnout in North Amherst. So it was, so was mentioning, I'm aware that person one and three, as they are currently, they have very low voter turnout. And they're currently together in District 1, One, right? yes, yeah. they're currently together so. in District 1. So um, they have, I didn't know whether, I was trying to complement and have it different, somewhat different also in that area. Um, I see both of. So how do we move from here? Do we want to go looking at the different maps? Do we think that we could take combination of these things, these, these maps and have different, because if we were looking at district, we could have one district that is all South Amherst, right? 
So we could have, based on the two maps, we could have one that is all South Amherst or one that is all, almost all East Amherst. I'm concerned about right. the big, big blobs. Um, yeah, but I think with that, I mean, that's what I think about. And that's what we have in our current precincts too. I mean, those are some of the choices that the Charter Commission made. I mean, that's a question I think that, I don't know if we have to solve that question right now, right? But we, I think we do need to get a place like where we're, we're limiting some of our choices just to narrow things down. Um, I have a question on this map. I don't see precinct 10. Am I missing something? Oh, oh it's, okay, it's out of order, okay. Yes. No, the, well, in the... I, the numbers are random. It's not... Okay, so, I mean, the... that's, that's one of the difficulties I'm having because your numbers sort of go south to north and the other, there's a different order to the precinct numbers. When I looked at... Arena's map, I renumbered them to try to make them the same, like in terms of having the north um, precincts be like one and two and things. But then I sort of ran into issues just because some of them are, you can't, I mean, can you claim that it's like the same precinct because the geography is so different? So I sort of gave up that comparison a little bit. And then yeah. I was comparing mine to Peggy's just to see how those looked. Yeah, but I, I do think the sort of the north-south orientation might be better in terms of the way we assign the precinct numbers, even though they're they're vastly different. There's also a reality to the fact that people think in terms of being a resident of South Amherst or being a resident of North Amherst or being in and, and if there's pre precincts. Um, or being in the center of town. If the precincts range from South Amherst to the center of town, North Amherst to the center of town, um, as Tracy has indicated, there's an identity that people have within town as is, is, is typical with most people. And um, started losing that identity and losing the, the uh, even though there are a lot of different, variations of the uh, uh, as far as the, the people that live in any one area, they still identify with the geographical area. I think um, that the uh, Irene is kind of distorts that identity. I would be interested in hearing Tracy's um, description of her own map. Could we? Okay. Would that be okay to get that now? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so as I was saying, I started with um, the, the current precincts and I also looked at Peggy's map, including some of the parts that I wanted to change on Peggy's map. Um, and so, I mean, the reality is, and I'm sorry, I meant to write this up more and I just ran out of time. Um, the reality is that, you know, Amherst between 2010 and 2020 changed by about 1700 people. Um, and in terms of where those, where some of the big population changes were, like we know that UMass built the Commonwealth College dorms that were part of precinct 10, which I think it's like 800 or 900 beds. We know that the um, population decreased at Hampshire College. Uh, we know that um, you know student enrollments increased, and there were more students, undergraduate students, living in more neighborhoods, and so there's certain like densification there. Um, I mean, in terms of you know how did we how did we change the population? But I saw those as sort of some of the main trends, um, just really generally speaking. Um, so in terms of things, you know, I wanted to, so, I mean, there, there were a few places, smaller places where um, I actually wanted to change some of the precinct boundaries just because I thought that um, they weren't ideal the way they were before. So one example of that is on at like North Pleasant Street and Pine Street, like Mike, if you could 
show that corner there, the corner of North Pleasant oh. Pine. It's like the top of orange. No, that is not pine on the north. Yeah. So in the current uh, precincts maps and also in Peggy's map, if you see Katurs is purple and then the green, there's this little green corner, which is in green and not purple. So that I believe is the intersection with um, like the little block with like um, House of Teriyaki and things. I have a feeling that that might have been put there, put into green and not purple as it was in the earlier precinct, the 2011 precinct, just because of balancing the population. But to me, it made sense to reunite it. And so that's why I put that into the, um, the group that included that section of North Pleasant Street and also that section of Pine Street. Um, both of which, particularly on the North Pleasant Street portion, like there's other student rentals and things too. Um, so um, in terms of things I changed from Peggy's map. So, I mean, one thing I did wanna change is that, so I'm in precinct four myself, you know, as part of district three. And so precinct four, and pre, uh, District 3 went up a lot in population. And the reason that happened was because of the construction of the Commonwealth College dorms on the UMass campus. And so Peggy, when she created her district, you know, base, it seems pretty similar to that, where you have both some sections of Southwest as well as the Commonwealth College dorms. Um, and this precinct extends all the way from Northampton Road, Route 9, like all the way up to towards North Amherst. Um, as somebody who lives in that precinct, I felt like that was too large a geography for me, um, and I didn't want and, may, and I didn't want so many dorms to be in my precinct. So I cut this off at Mass Ave, which is like the center of the UMass campus. Um, I also added along North Pleasant, I mean along Route Nine, Northampton Road. So if you look south of Northampton Road on Peggy's map towards the western side, these, these properties in here, which include uh, Greensleeves and um, Hawking Meadow and things. So, whoa, Mike. So those, um, those census blocks, uh, Peggy <laughs> had put them in, those census blocks, Peggy had put them into South Amherst. Um, they're currently in precinct five, which is a downtown district. I didn't really see, you know, this is an area, again, it's really close to my precinct, precinct four, and I'm in this area <coughs> quite a bit. I didn't really think that they would feel like they're part of South Amherst. So I chose to extend precinct four down into that area. And there is a certain amount of density there. It's actually interesting um, because this is a bit of an aside, but there's already additional housing there, right? So um, Barry Roberts has the new housing that he built across from Stop and Shop. So there's already new density in that area, which didn't exist in 2020 when the census was done. And so that's one change I made. Um, so I have a question on the, your map. There seems to be uh, the prison with the dorm in between the other one. Um, in fours, it goes on both sides of the yeah roof. so that was just an oversight on my part and it was really helpful to have mike's map to just show that i didn't connect those fully i have fixed that now um mike okay. if you could even zoom in there it zooms in i know we're trying to do too much <laughs> um so what happened there is that I, I guess I wasn't sure exactly where the boundaries were, um, but that this, you know, the, with, with this section of Precinct 4, I was running it between Mass Ave and Fearing. And then we have the Southwest dorms. So I didn't ask my, my, Mike to redraw this, but what I did to address it is that there is a small census block that runs along Mass Ave. And so on east of Lincoln, I had made it the district for the pink and then west of Lincoln, I had made it blue, which is part of the cluster with the, the 25, 12, um, very large, that's our largest census block for population. So what I did to try to connect it a little better is I put this, um, 
the census block that runs on Mass Ave, I turn that pink. And then where Mike's cursor is, that's actually a precinct. I mean, that's a block with zero population. So I changed that to be pink. And then I also changed the block right to the south of it um, to be pink as well. And and it's possible that the there could be concerns about that, but um, I'm not really huh. sure like how to address that. I mean, I think we're always going to have an issue in that we have the cluster there. So that's a that so that it's an island within in, the blue one would be an island within the that, pink. Yes, the blue would be an island within pink. That's true. So so then we are forced that but, that's a district. Oh, or actually, I'm sorry. So what we could do then is we could keep Mass Ave blue, and then we could also connect the blue to the one the like beige tan one above it. But then, if I if I connect pre, the sections of precinct four on the south side, so my concern there was so we are limiting again when we are limiting the 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 if we are thinking about districts is that uh, this would be dorms. The only portion that are not dorms in the night time is the portion between the train tracks and is Pleasant Street. But this that's is the, this is residential neighborhoods. This is that's the, the only so, neighborhood. So, so so that's the only that is non dorms within the within that district. Would be if we have a district that is the blue plus the tan. Also, isn't there some up towards oh no I see it's like Eastman Lane. That's correct. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so if we have it so embedded inside we kind of force to have a district that the only portion that is non dorm would be the portion between East, right. East and uh, Red Gate Lane. No, I'm sure that that's something we could look at. Um, can I just kind of finish like wrapping yeah. up my, okay. So Mike, if you go to the North a little bit and we can, we can stay zoomed in, it's okay. Um, <clears throat> so the, um, oh, well, we, now we can't see Peggy's, but one thing I did is that, so Peggy's district one map, the, the Northwest district, she had one, block that was in the dorms on Eastman Lane. And that felt a little awkward to me just to have a single dorm as part of that. So what I chose to do is to put that into the purple district, I mean, sorry, into the orange districts and then um, balance that population by changing the boundaries along like East Leverett Road. And so I'm doing it like along a river. And so I moved some of those over. Um, and then, you know, one of the other things I did in South Amherst, I mean, I'm not crazy about South Amherst being so big, but I don't really know what to do about that because as we talked about the Hampshire College lost population. Um, but so the, what I did here was along Shea Street and to Pomeroy Lane. So, you know, as my kids went to Crocker and I was trying to sort of unite this neighborhood a little bit, I think it's important that, you know, you have Orchard Valley which is to the south of Pomeroy Lane um, in the yellow, Mike. So those are, you know, that's a, that's a neighborhood, Orchard Valley. And then you have um, East Hadley Road with all the apartment complexes. The apartment complexes are on the south of East Hadley Road. And then you also have the residential on the north, which isn't as dense. And then I also just included again, so Crocker Farm, is a little bit south of Shea Street. And yeah, so you have Mount Holyoke Drive and things right in there. Um, and I mean, there there is definitely like a neighborhood connection around Crocker Farm um, in terms of uniting that area. And um, and then, so that's like how I changed South Amherst. And then, I mean, in terms of some of the other areas, I tried to make, I tried to reduce the number of tails and whatever tails and fingers and things as we talked about. Um, it's weird that there are a couple little tails and fingers I saw are still on my map, but some of them are actually figments of the census block data. So Mike, I, I, there was one, I, I, I went and looked back at them and I would love for you to just zoom into this. I think if you zoom in on the green, the two, um, yeah, in here, if you can like zoom in more. Yeah. Yeah. There's one where it looks like the maybe the polygon should have been closed or something, and it's not, and then it looks weird. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of look like, oh, look, there's an error, but 
Um, so I, I'm not sure how we would oh, great. address that. So where is it exactly? So I was just, you know, there were like a few places when I started scanning around the map that you created. Yeah. It's in the green. So okay. where was it? Oh, yes. Yeah. So sorry. There's this little sliver off East Hadley Road, just below the East Hadley Road words. Like oh, north of said, Bridge I, Street. I thought you said up north. I'm sorry. But. There's there's one census block that is all river that crosses other town, other ones. No, I'm saying go north, north, like north of Bridge Street. And there's that little polygon, and then in south of East Leverett East Road. East Leverett Road. Okay, you said East Hadley. I'm sorry. That's no, why I was sorry, East back south. sorry, East Leverett Road. Yep. So if you zoom in, like right below the words of like East Leverett Road, there's like that little green part that like kind of sticks out. This right here. Yeah, but that's actually yeah. a super weird polygon. It's like it looks like it looks like it's supposed to be closed or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can look at that. Yeah, Just this okay. little this little okay. spike. And, and this little sliver up north, like at the end of the East Leverett Road, that's actually the polygon too, but that wasn't as weird as the other one. Okay. Yeah. Peggy, you have your hand. Mm -hmm. um, so that I, um, I really like Tracy's map. Um, I mean, I like my map also, but <laughs> I really like Tracy's map for some of the things. Um, and I played around with it as well. And, um, you know, I was able to fix the, I mean, there are ways to fix that purple um, and I don't know what color that is, dark blue or black um, sure. problem, the island problem without having right to, here. yeah, without okay. having to use the UMass. Sure. Um, I'm sorry, the Mass Ave district. So, but it, but they break up this neighborhood, the sort of Lincoln Street. Um, right neighborhood, which is, of course, already broken up. So maybe that doesn't matter. Anyway, but um, I think any one of the little problems that we see may be fixable because there are lots of ways to adjust things. Um, so I, it, I'm trying to think about what we do for homework, like how we go forward. Um, and it seems to me that the next step is to start um, is to either pick a map or pick a couple of maps and start drawing some districts to see what we come up with in terms of how many voters are registered in those districts in as much as we can tell. Of course, since we've changed the lines, we won't actually have the data, so we have to guess um, what, how many neighborhoods we've cut, because I don't think any of the maps um, get away without cutting some neighborhood somehow. Um, so which neighborhoods does it feel okay to cut, which one's not? Um, how many, uh, how, how we've distributed the residence halls, how we've distributed the um, apartment complexes. Is that something we want to consider? Whether we want to try to have a district that has several so that maybe that gives people more voting power or is it something we want to distribute because that's more neighborly? Um, I don't, these are things, questions. Um, but, you know, it's quarter of, and so I think we need to decide yeah. what we're going to do this week so that we have something really um, to really work on next week. So would people want to vote on one map at this moment to focus on one map and see how it would work based on out of the three possibilities? That might be some might need some tweaking. Do we want to commit to one map right now? Or it, it, the problem of having options. We have options. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. The problem of having options. At some point, we're gonna say, okay, that's it. We stick with to this to this one. Uh, but I, I think the. So I think um, just in the discussion, and I, I'm, maybe you all haven't settled, but maybe you can begin to narrow and vote on the two best representations for right now, and then you rework those. So at least you've eliminated maybe one, and you get closer to going to a single map to work on. But that's just a suggestion in order to begin narrowing things down. And the floor is open. Yes, Tracy. Where's my... I mean, I was going to say that I, I would like to proceed with one map. 
um, uh, and I'm not, you know, wedded to my map, um, but just, I would, I mean, I was explaining how I changed the map a little bit, and I'm sure that there could be tweaks that we can do, but just generally speaking, I'd like to really start to think about the districts and how we could do the districts. And even, I was wondering, Mike, if you have like a blank map of Amherst sort of thing, or maybe maybe if we could do something with our um, the map that we're gonna choose to move forward with. And then, you know, we could, instead of having you do it repeatedly, like maybe draw some different districts to try to like look at the different configurations and what, 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 what what might work and we could each come back with based on the map that we if we choose a map tonight based on that map like how oh. people would configure the districts to see if people have similar ideas or different ideas and then maybe following the next meeting we could like run preliminary statistics on those or something yeah. mike is it possible to have a, a layer that is uh, on the map so that that it has the prisons as they are drawn so that we can we can start combining in the same way that we were combining census blocks we can combine the precincts and get the statistics from the precincts as we as we combine them um so i so maybe my brain is behind where you guys are thinking um what i was thinking was you know, if we pick one map or two maps, what it would be nice, I think what would be helpful would be to load that map into um, into kind of our, our um, into here yeah. as, a, as another layer. Um, so that, it, you know, if we pick one map and we load it in here as another layer, then you guys could, you folks could turn it on and have the the num the population numbers kind of there on top of it, just in case you wanted to kind of play with a boundary here or there, like move move this block from Tracy's map precinct seven into precinct eight or something like that. Um, and then then creating the statistics and stuff would be really easy because it would be like, oh, we just moved forty two people from here to there. Um, that's kind of what I was thinking. Um, and we could do it with more than one map. We could put two maps in here as a as kind of a working list. Um, I don't know if that is what people are thinking or if that's what you were getting at, Irina. Kind of. Marilyn? So just for context, would it, I mean, for me, I think it would be helpful to know what the existing precincts and or districts are. And I, I think there have been arguments made for changing the districts, which I you know, could sort of agree with, but it would be nice to know where we are now compared to where we're going and how much how much we're changing the existing configuration. So if if we if we take my idea to load it into this interactive map, you then can... you would be able to turn, you know, you would be able to turn zoom out and turn 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 on the existing voting districts or the okay. existing voting precincts to kind of to kind of compare that <clears throat> to whichever map we're deciding to work on. Okay. Um, so, it's just an idea. So mm -hmm. I'll say I didn't share it before the meeting. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I can share my screen, but I did have a spreadsheet like where I had calculated the current voting districts. I mean, sorry, the current voting precincts for like each of the blocks to the extent I could, except for some of the ones around Southwest, which got changed like so dramatically. Um, and I did map where, which um, precinct, like Peggy's map put them into and which precinct my map put them into and how many precinct, I mean, how many census blocks were changed under each of the maps and what the population was that was affected. I mean, I can, I can show, I mean, I'm happy to share that spreadsheet with people. I didn't really want to put it in the packet and make it a PDF and have it be garbage. And I mean, if it's okay, and if it's considered data, that's something I could email around. Okay. So Craig and then Tammy and then Mike. I was just going to ask if we could have the voting records put on as another layer so that we could see where, where the vote, most of the voting takes place now. So. Can, okay, can, uh, Mike, can you show the map? I think the first thing that we can look is uh, by, by um, just as an information, we could add this other layer. 
But if you, based on Sue's information, she said the lowest turnout was precincts one, three, and 10, and right. highest turnout was precincts two, six, seven, and eight. I, d I don't know. And, uh, precincts one and three are district one. I don't know how the others combine in the different districts. Tammy, you had your hand raised. Um, yeah, I just, I think it would be very nice if each of us had a chance to say where we are with this. Yeah. Um, okay. So that there's an equal uh, conversation about it. Okay. You want to start? I think we can um, stop the share and then we go around. So it's, uh, it's 7.50. So I think that this is a good time. Um, Okay, I, okay. I wanted to say that I, I, Irene, I really appreciate your map because that's what I was trying to do when I originally was doing this idea, but I kind of came back around to the idea that I preferred to be closer to the current precincts that we have. And so since I had um, Peggy's map to work with, um, I actually ran the numbers for the districts and it is uh, the numbers come out really good and really close. I think the biggest variation is uh, 149 people of a possible 400. So um, I prefer Peggy's map. Um, I, I see what Tracy is trying to do. And I guess when I look at her map, I see some extra fingers that um, I, and that island that I think is somewhat problematic. And so that's, that's what I have to say. And that's the, I would like to focus on that map. And if it needs tweaking, then to move towards Tracy's map. Okay, Mike, you have uh, your hand raised. I want all of you folks to have your say as, as the voting members. Um, I just have two data points I wanna talk about before we, we break away. So you guys okay. go ahead, but I'm gonna leave my hand up. Okay, Marilyn, I'm going to go with the... Um, I, I think I agree with what Tammy said. Um, I'm not gonna elaborate on it in the interest of time. Okay, uh, great. I'm I'm fine with both Peggy's map and Tracy's map. I, either one of them, are, I think, are excellent starting points for us, or hopefully, to work towards the finish. Okay, Peggy. Uh, I feel the same as Craig. I'd be very happy to work with either Tracy's or my map. Okay, Tracy. I would like us to switch over to one map, though I guess we can keep two maps. Because originally we had talked about having all of our precincts and districts done by next week. So I don't know if that's still the time frame. I mean, maybe we've backed that off a little bit because we've already gotten feedback from the state. And if that's the case, then I feel like we really do need to narrow it down with one map and maybe see where we can tweak or fix you know any concerns that people have with either map um i mean i will say just you know in a little bit in defense of my map i don't aside from that issue with precinct 10 being surrounded by precinct 4 which i think peggy said she has some ways to address it i don't really see any fingers on my map like for the most part there are a few fingers related to really um dense dorms which was sort of unavoidable um, the other fingers are actually that I see are actually results of the way the census box are currently drawn. Um, so if we decide to use Peggy's map as a priority map, like some of the some of the comments I made or the changes I made, I would want to like implement those into that map. Like particularly um, with some of the South Amherst pieces and that along Northampton Road and not having the Commonwealth College dorm and Southwest dorm in the same precinct personally. Thanks. So I want to give a voice also to the non-voting members. Um, Dee, Sue, and Mike, do you want to comment or? Dee? Yeah, I um, I felt that, you know, in looking at the, um, the previous uh, map, the Peggy and Tracy's uh, share some similarities with the previous uh, districting map. Um, 
it's hard for me to say like there's big differences in those two because honestly I, I don't see uh, large differences uh, within those two maps. My concern for Colonial Village um, is always grouped with um, you know uh, a district that doesn't have a lot in common with it so it's continually <laughs> getting uh, grouped in a way that it doesn't share many commonalities um, but I don't know how to really uh, get over that problem you know whereas you have a Pomeroy village and you have a uh, butternut uh, which are two um, apartment complexes that seem to group with um, what we're assuming to be homeowners right within those communities as well but it's just very different it's it's um it, it's hard to i guess address my concerns about the majority uh minority uh because it's it's uh couched with class um or assumptions around renters i guess as opposed to homeowners and uh if you look at where Colonial Village is, each time, whether it's Peggy's map or Tracy's map, it's still uh, grouped with this um, kind of a community that may not have so much in common with it is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. So um, those, are, those are my concerns, but I think Tracy and Peggy both tried to take it on and it still, it still hasn't solved it <laughs> in a way. So I just think they're... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe you all could figure it out uh, for it to have um, just, a, you know, in terms of uh, a voting uh, block and, and more commonality in, in some way situated. Um, but I just think those two maps are, are similar. And maybe that's something for you all to, to really try to take on, like which one is the, the better representation of, um, you know, what we have in terms of census. That's all. I see. Yeah, no, I don't have any comments tonight. No. Okay. Mike. Be. And then. To no, I, I mean, I honestly think looking at them from purely a geographic perspective, I don't think the, I would not think that the LEDRC would have any issues with, you know, fingers or appendages here for any of these. I think they're, they're both very well balanced. Um, when you look at the population numbers, the variance numbers, and then the, the overall shape of them. Um, <clears throat> okay. I was trying to think, D, um, with Colonial Village, um, I mean, what, what would be the best thing to do with that? It's just situated between Belchertown Road and Southeast Street. I'm wondering, like, but, but I don't know, that's a, go ahead. Sorry, Mike. Um, but isn't Colonial Village in the same um precinct as the um, the housing complexes out at route nine like at the um belcher town amherst line isn't that part of the same it what is that called rolling, about ro rolling green rolling green, rolling green. Mm -hmm. so isn't that, that isn't colonial village and rolling green in both peggy's map and my map in the same precinct it is it is yes yeah. and i mean that and rolling green is a larger population than colonial village mm -hmm. i think and it it has similar demographics. I think the Colonial Village probably has more grad students than Rolling Green. There's another complex at yeah. the entrance of Gatehouse Road and Echo Village. And then there's um, the condos on but they, Gatehouse Road. Yeah. See, I think just the opposite, Tracy, that Rolling Green has more grad students than Colonial Village, but yeah, <laughs> I could I be know. totally wrong. Maybe there's a good mix. Is I don't that know. Anecdotal. I mean, no. I, mean, I, agree. <laughs> I just I see. I know a lot of grown, grad students who live in Colonial Village. That's why. Yeah, and I know just yeah. the opposite. Oh, so yeah. it is. It's all anecdotal. There we go. <laughs> that's, 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 so, there's a lot um, more. There's more more affordable housing in Rolling Green. That's what I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, because right, some of it was protected. That was the thing right. with um. Right. Section yeah. eight housing that they really protected housing in Rolling Green. Yeah. Yeah. So Peggy has her hand up. Well, we haven't heard from you, Irena. Uh, 
I like my but <laughs> yes, an exercise. I like puzzles. So, uh, uh, but I, I don't know if there's some items. I know that mine is too radical, and I went. I said, okay, let's. I went to a clean slate. I didn't look at previous maps. So that was me going from the other extreme. I think I wanted to, on purpose, I wanted to see what it would look like. Look at the statistics without looking at current pressings and what it would look like. And I agree that maybe it's too long, but I think there are some, I wonder if whether some things um, could be taken into account sometimes as a part of the North Amherst or towards the West. Um, I have an issue with there's such a big block on the Southeast, um, but, but uh, we, I'm, that's the population. Yeah, no, I mean, that's the population, I mean, but that's how, uh, and my concern is building districts, particularly at the center of town. We have to be very careful uh, about the center of the two maps, how we've been, because we know that current districts sometimes have an issue about representation, about voter turnout. Uh, so the question is whether one of the, our premises is trying to address this issue. If we can stay too close, we won't be able to, we won't be addressing that issue. So that would be part of <coughs> part of our list. So if we stay very close to what we have, we won't be addressing one of the issues. So I think that's something to have into account when we are building. Maybe we have to look for a different combination of precincts so that to address mm -hmm. one of the items that we had thought about uh, about the um, representation of people. That I'm okay going with any map that people want and majority, but I want to be cognizant that we know that current districts and precincts, there are some issues about representation. So whether we want to use this opportunity to attend that or mm -hmm. That goes contrary to keeping the lines as they are. Tracy, and then oh. I think we should put us so a homework. Sorry. So as I said earlier, and I'm happy to share my screen if it's helpful, or I can send people this. I did check to compare Peggy's um, census box with mine in terms of where they were assigned. Is it helpful if I just show it briefly? I think that in the interest said, of but, time, but, but, no, okay. yeah, yeah. In the interest of time, I guess. So one of the things is that so basically, um, so our precincts are 80 percent the same. The way we drew them in terms of the census box there of the 423 precincts um, all but 81 of them agree and some of them are just very minor changes and some of the ones that don't agree are zeros with population so we're okay. talking about we the ma our two maps are identical except for say 20 percent so if people want to continue with both math we could do that i just was trying to sort of simplify it and it sounds like from what the feedback that people are giving about different neighborhoods that they that both maps could be like tweaked a little bit. But I find it comforting that you know that they're 80% the same right now. Okay. So okay. So I was gonna suggest we have we have to make the exercise of creating districts and looking at statistics based. Uh, I would say we could assign half. The people to one map and have the other people to the other map to do to look at the district or Marilyn, you are shaking your head. I think you know, given the amount of time we have, I think we should just decide on one. Given that both Peggy's and the two of the maps are almost identical, we if we're talking about tweaking them, let's just go with one and then play with it. It would be my recommendation, Peggy. Um, I, I appreciate that. I also appreciate that in the past, people have, um, committees have put up different precincting maps um, for the community to look at um, as they're deciding. So if we decide on a single map now, we're not actually giving the community time to input on precincts. We may be giving them input on districts. And that doesn't feel quite right to me. Um, I feel like we should have a couple of maps out there of different precincts. People may or may not comment, but at least we're trying. Um, and then we go with the districts and, and we're gonna do the same thing again with the districts. I, I like that idea. I, I mean, like the be... idea. And I, I like, I've been trying to publicize as much as with the people I know about the 
this work to see if we can get any comment. And I would appreciate if anybody can do the same, all of us, um, uh, because we want to have as much input as we can. So I think, I think my map, I think is out of the question right now. Um, we have two maps, we narrow it down to two. Uh, then they might change, but I think it's important that we look at the demographics and districting how they will look like. Um, so I think the homework for next week is, Mike has put up uh, information about uh, some demographics, a layer, so on the map, you can click layers about demographics. He sent this information today. So one of the issues that we want to look is whether any, check whether any of these maps uh, is splitting communities just by looking at the demographics, whether there's a line going through some density of demographics. I, I'm, I'm thinking aloud and I'm open to everybody have suggestions. So I'm coming to this as, as I go. So everybody could should have, and then based on the two maps that we have is what would be possible configuration of districts because that's what people that at the end are, they're gonna care a lot also um, so which of the maps may give us more configurations or which one is the more balanced configurations just based on the information and some of the information might be anecdotal so we we have to run with the new knowledge that we have with the neighborhoods as much as we can because we don't have the full demographic information. We don't have. Um, so I think part of the information that we have is anecdotal. And when we are building the districts, we're going to have to use that because we don't have the, uh, the full demographic. But I think the homework is um, to try to build as many district configurations that make sense following the, some, the criteria that Peggy suggested today, um, trying to check for that. Yes, uh, Tracy and then Mike. Uh, okay, um, so I had one uh, request um, in terms of, I like the idea of going forward to the public with two maps and letting people weigh in. Um, if people do see specific issues with my map, like I would, including that Southwest area, which I didn't notice until the map was published. But if people do see particular concerns or Peggy mentioned she had a solution to that, like I would like to incorporate those into the version that goes out to the public. So maybe we don't send it to the public like until later the week, today's Tuesday, we could release it to the public on say Thursday or something. Um, and just as a housekeeping thing, Mike, I noticed sometimes when we've up given you updated versions of the map, like they're still published in the packet with the same exact name. And so perhaps, you know, at some point we want to just do want to have like the different iterations available. It also shows people that we've tried different iterations and we've gone through this process multiple times, right? So I don't, I don't know if it's a big challenge to change the names or not. Um, um, anyway, so one other comment I had is, I mean, I had done the calculation of like looking at each of the census blocks, describing them, assigning them, I mean, comparing them to the um, current precinct map and where they would fall into, or, I mean, Peggy gave me the list of where hers um, fall into and where mine fall into. And so I'd be happy to share that. That actual is also linked with all the original population data that was shared the full data set, like with all the different race subgroups and stuff. And if that doesn't sound like an issue, I'm happy to send it after the meeting and I would send it. It's an Excel file, which again is why I didn't put in the packet because it would be okay. PDF. Yeah. So is there an issue with sharing that? It's just data, but I think no, but I think Mike was gonna make a layer, a layer where we could overlay the two, like the current sense the current districts with the new precincts and and the precincts right. that we create. So I don't think the going through the spreadsheet is gonna give I don't know. To me, it's actually helpful to look at the spreadsheet and do some of the calculations and it ties into the race. I mean, I think it's helpful to have both. Like if we're going to have an interactive map, we can look at it on the map okay. side. And in terms of the numbers, we also have to have in a spreadsheet form. It's easy to do sums and look at the population. And like Tammy mentioned, she had already calculated um, the districts and so on. So personally, I like okay. it in both. But 
Mike and then Craig. So um, I want to just talk about one thing. Uh, Craig, you asked about voter data. Um, I can only speak from my experience in the past is sometimes, and Sue, correct me if I'm wrong, but sometimes the state can be very protective of registered voter, voter, voter data and like taking that data and creating products from it, like creating maps would be an example of that. I don't know um, what sort of limitations the state may put on that data. So I can't promise that we'll be able to take the registered voters and map them. Um, I know in the past they have restricted certain things like that. Um, um, one other thing is from uh, Councillor Hanneke's email um, in the agenda packet, she mentioned uh, a, an interest in the maps that we produce to show proposed district boundaries, but also demographic statistics. Um, and I was curious if anybody had any opinions for what sort of demographic stats they would like to see. Would, would that be like percentage breakdowns of race per potential precinct that we're looking at? What, what sort of metric would we like to see there? Um, and then I just wanted to procedurally say what I'm hearing as my to-do list is to take both Peggy's map and Tracy's map and to load it into the interactive map so that you folks can interact with it and, and you know play around with maybe changing a boundary or comparing it to the current precinct boundaries or the current district boundaries and looking at it. I just want to confirm that that's correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So I wanted to Thank wait you. like a day or two to just tweak mine. I don't know if okay. Peggy feels like her change any tweaks, but I'd like to fix mine. Craig? I was simply going to suggest that, that might uh, indicate what revision it is as as Tracy indicated, and maybe Tracy, you could say what revision it is, and Peggy, you could say what revision yours is, because it's certainly not the first iteration of either one of them. So, um, uh, this is the first iteration of both of these maps. Well, I'm sure individually, it is more than one iteration. This is Tracy's first iteration of ten. No, because I had Peggy's. done. Yeah, but yours had I, yours had yours had errors on it, right? There, there were things that there there were like blocks, there were islands within other blocks, and so I wasn't going to publish one that had like a, a blatant kind of. Oh no, I understand. I, yeah. yeah, it was just a little confusing, just in terms of also, I mean, just for the archives. Like, I think it's okay, you know, in the packet. Like when I had when you published my first fifteen map and it had errors. Mm -hmm. And then I fix the errors and you publish it again. But it, I mean, because this is still draft, like it's okay mm -hmm. but to continually have the map called version okay. one when I know that there's been like okay. a bunch of earlier iterations. And also just for the public to see that like we are tweaking it and we are adjusting okay. it and things like that. That's all. Do you have your hand raised? So two things, um, since you all are now seeking with these two maps public input, what's uh, your method or plan of getting the word out for folks to go onto the town website and take a look at it uh, before the next meeting. Is there some discussion of that? And then secondly, um, the TOA um, potential developments, at what point are you all going to include that within your um, map making or have you have Peggy you and Tracy looked at those potential developments and the numbers there's at least two pretty large ones and figured out is that are those potential proportions uh, okay for when those developments go up so that's my two questions so I can say a little bit about the potential development I think right now is everything's potential. And if we were to consider every single potential development, we have to scrap the 10 precincts and go to 15. Yeah. Because any 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 development in Amherst is gonna tip us over the 40,000. Uh, so um, we don't know the timeline. We don't know what's the impact of the pandemic on some of this development. Uh, I think the committee made at some point the choice to go with the 10. Uh, but if we, if, we, if we incorporate any potential, the only thing that we can say is try to keep 
uh, where they have the potential for the development uh, to include them in precincts, trying to put them on the lower bound if possible, but we don't have much wiggle room. Uh, if not, we have to stop right now the 10 precincts and go with 15 and, and uh, to try to include the 15. The different uh, and that's complicated i mean 15 is much more complicated yeah no i i appreciate the clarification that's why i wanted to know had it been considered already within your boundaries um and i think that's going to be an important uh response for when when folks do inquire um so going back to the first question uh what is the plan i mean i've been sharing yeah. like on social media um meeting dates and links um obviously it's <laughs> my small circle <laughs> it, it's not we like have, folks are clamoring to to be on have, here <laughs> i've been also sharing with people but we have one uh, one uh, one person in the audience yay and they, okay they actually have their hand raised Oh, um, well, there we go. Yeah, so we're gonna, uh, for the public comment, uh, um, two more minutes. Um, so I would love to have a press release, but with the, with the timeline that we have, I don't know if we have time and I don't know how to publicize. I, I'm open to suggestions. Tracy? I have a quick comment on that. I mean, could we just say that, you know, the district advisory board is continuing its work and we've created two draft maps for precincts and we're starting to look at districts and we welcome feedback. It could be like a very short release and we could ask, um, we could Brianna. ask, the, yeah, Brianna at the town to just even just send it out on the email. Let's say we're, like we welcome feedback and people can email feedback to Sue. Okay. Or, I mean, I just... I mean, it could be very short. So real quick within that, Sue, and I, I don't know how that totally works. I know I subscribe to the uh, text messaging for the town and certain things are announced. There. It's not always just meeting announcement. Sometimes it's an announcement. Um, and then it, it's a link that takes you to, let's say, a press release or further elaboration. Is there a way to maybe do that? Because folks that subscribe to those text messages, they get, you know, it's a pretty quick turnaround and they get um, those pretty regularly. Is there a way to do that? Yeah, Mike can talk about that. That's the notify me, correct? Um no, I think what I think what um, D is referring to is something that's called a news and announcements on our webpage. Um, when you go to the AmherstMA.gov webpage, there's like a you can scroll down a little bit, and there's like a pant. There's um, there's you know paving on this street, or or are those the sort of things okay. that you receive messages for D, like paving here or road closures there, or yes, yes. So it would be a news and announcement sue that okay. it, it's more than just a press release it's also a news item and it would come with a picture yeah. um and it automatically goes from there to facebook and twitter and a whole bunch of other social media things so maybe that's what we talked to brianna about cool. is creating a note um a news item for it craig you have your hand up i'm peggy I, it if you send it to the india by friday they'll put it out by, on saturday's oh, india yeah so those, a lot of response well we can send it to the current we can send it to you know the gazette we could send it everywhere if we're willing to get feedback peggy uh, <sighs> I, same thing that craig said okay so do we have a volunteer that was willing to write a four line press release to send it around i can uh because i did the last one it's just you know send uh specifically i guess what you want in it um and then i can put it up uh tracy so i just have a question going back to our earlier item but just in terms of our time frame right so we're talking about like after this meeting before the next meeting exploring the districts these two precinct maps we came up with and looking at districts but when is it we do need to report to the council in a month so what is your current time frame that you're thinking of in terms of when we need to finalize the precincts and districts and kind of going back before we go to the council 
I'm thinking ideally by the end of the month. Okay. Because so we, like two more meetings, two more two meetings. meetings. I, that okay. I, I'm taking, I, I'm open to suggestion, but I want to have at least a solid two week, two week time to tweak whatever things that might come up and to write the report that we have to submit and the district. Yes, Craig? I, I just have to, on a personal note, say that I have to go to California in two weeks for an indefinite period of time. And, uh, I may not make all the meetings. Okay. Okay, thanks for letting us know. Um, so the, I think the press release, and I, I, I want to say it right now so that we don't have problems with meet, open meeting law and communicating. I think the, the message should be the district of Ceremony continues to meet. We have some preliminary maps and we welcome suggestions and comments to uh, this email address or at our next meeting on Tuesday. And we and don't have demographic data except for the and then, yes, uh, we, population and race data. I mean, people can also look at them themselves Yes, based on the spreadsheet that's out there. Yeah, I think that essentially short and to the point um, where we are at this point. So it's a mid point of announcement. And then Mike, you'll send like the links to add to that for those maps because we could just include it. Okay. Okay. Correct. Those links, so, those, and I can send those to you, D, when Tracy is, because I believe, and I, if I heard correctly, Peggy, your map is staying static, correct? You're not I may tweak any... it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, D, I will. When do you want those by, like, Mike, can we get them to you by well, like Thursday morning or something? Um, we could do a press release by Friday. Yeah, that, that sounds fine to me. Okay. So D, what I'll do is I'll, I will send you the links to them when Peggy and Tracy give me the thumbs up that their maps are complete and no more changes are occurring. I'll send you to those, those, and then you can put that in, embed that in your text. Got it. Okay. So okay. our next meeting is Tuesday, next Tuesday. So the agenda has to be published by Friday. Uh, so if anybody wants an item, please send it to me uh, before. Friday morning. Uh, we, I usually try to send it either Thursday night or early Friday morning so that we have some wiggle room just in case and we don't want to miss a meeting. Okay. And I think to, yes. I just want to make sure we don't forget the the person's public comment. See the person. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. The other issue is, so the homework is Mike, can you let us know when you have updated the interactive map with the layers so that people can start playing? That won't be until Tracy and Peggy give me right. the thumbs up, which is Thursday ish, Friday. -ish I'm going to give you mine, okay. like, you know, within 24 hours. It will be okay. okay. I'm not so changing us, much at this point. Thank you. So let us know as soon as that, because then we can start working for next meeting. And yes. then hopefully we can send you something before. Okay. I don't know, Friday, Monday, Thompson. before Monday, so that we have <clears throat> some time. Yes, Tracy? I was going to say, and that could go in the press release too, that like, again, like we have the interactive, similar to the language we had before, that we have an interactive map like on our website and people can play with it themselves and the spreadsheet is there as well for anybody who's like a data head who likes to do this. Okay. As some members of the public already are, as I can see, so. Okay. Do you want to include in the press release um, the date we're hoping to have it done by so people don't think they have a long time to play with it? Yes. So <laughs> yeah. we, that we have a hope to have a final version in the next two weeks. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So um, I think we can finish the discussion on this and go to public comment at the end of the meeting. Sorry about Thanks. the time. I'm going to allow, um, it's Meg Gage, allowed to talk. And I just brought her in. Thank you so much. Um, can you hear me OK? Yes. yes. Um, I appreciate this long meeting and the thoughtfulness. I really liked Peggy's uh, eight criteria very much. Um, I want to encourage you to think of what you're doing in the context of the master plan. Uh, which is the su supposed to be the kind of guiding 
outline of what we all do and particularly focus on um, village centers. Uh, there's actually gonna be a primer on Monday, the 27th of this month at 5.30, uh, a primer and then at six o'clock a public forum on the master plan, if that would be helpful for you to understand it. But it, I think the master plan is a document that we can all use to coordinate our strategies. Um, I also was on the Charter Commission and uh, involved in deciding how the different districts would be organized. And uh, originally the idea was to organize the districts in terms of precincts that had mixing up high, com combining high and low voter turnout. And it would have created districts that would have been without any rational relationship to geography. So for example, the original proposal for district one would have been the top half of North Amherst, the half of the intersection in North Amherst, the north side of Pine Street, going all the way to Atkins Reservoir and down to Pelham Road. And District 2 would have been the south side of Pine Street, the other half of the intersection in North Amherst. So we need to think about how neighborhoods work and how village centers work. And particularly some of the dynamics that relate to uh, unique circumstances. So this is, I'm not sure this is the most important thing, but in North Amherst, for example, we're in so-called opportunity zone which is part of the Trump 2017 tax bill, which determines, identifies certain parts of the country that were blighted and like industrial blight and rural poverty. And North Amherst qualified because of the low income of all the students. Uh, and so there's this huge tax incentive for people in North, uh, investors to put money into North Amherst with tax write-offs that creates a dynamic that gives us a particular uh, it's an opportunity for sure, but it's also a circumstance that requires our counselors to be uh, paying attention. And so if you divide up North Amherst into two parts, I'm giving you this as an example, we aren't able to respond so creatively or effectively to some of these things that happen. One of the curious things about, I used to be in, pre, I'm still in precinct one, <clears throat> We have 11 apartment complexes in precinct one. We had one of the, as it was reported earlier in this meeting, lowest voter turnouts in the whole town, but we had the most competitive town meeting elections because those of us who voted were very engaged. So that we need to look deeply at how neighborhoods work, how communities, how village centers work. Um, and, and particularly uh, paying attention to protecting our rural agricultural uh, parts of this town that are important to us. Um, so I guess I just encourage, I, I've said enough and the meeting's gone on a long time, so I'll stop there, but I appreciate very, very much the work you're all doing. I appreciated the three maps. I studied them carefully. I figured out how to screen save them all <laughs> so I can look at them later. Uh, but I really encourage you not to divide up village centers. And I know that you could have a precinct, you could combine a district, so you could combine two precincts into one district that wouldn't divide up a village center. So that's, but it, you know, we need to give our counselors an ability to represent neighborhoods that are uh, intact or that represent a, a set of interests and not fr be fragmented. This, this issue of the students is really, difficult and I appreciated very much your discussion about whether you divide them up among different precincts or you consolidate them into one, but students aren't gonna vote in local elections. They just aren't. And uh, you may try and you can go into a dorm and have a meeting, but why would they? I didn't vote when I was in college in local elections. Um, and so we just have to accept that as a fact, I think, and figure out how to deal with that. Anyway, sorry to bl blab on here, but I appreciate um, all you're doing. Also, I couldn't retrieve those two documents that others couldn't. It went to, you know, it's like I really wanted to see what Mandy wrote because she and I were on the Charter Commission together. and We agreed about a bunch of things and didn't always agree, but I was like, oh, I want to see what Mandy wrote. But anyway, <laughs>
they were hard. To, I couldn't open them. And I have dropped, you know, whatever the program is you're supposed to. I, I couldn't get them open. Anyway, thank you very much for public okay. comment. So I bye want bye. to clarify. Goodbye. Meg, I want to clarify the maps. You don't need to take a screenshot. They are on the on the packet material. You can have access to it without us without having to take a screenshot. Okay. So actually, so Mike, when you when we're um, updating these materials, can you put them in the packet for next week? Can we do it that way? And just okay. we'll start that packet. Yes. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Whatever. Any changes? The the change the tweaks to Peggy's map, the tweaks to um, Tracy's map, those PDF maps that I make, I'm going to load them into next week's packet, um, and then I'm going to, when they're finalized, I'm going to take those those precinct layers, and I'm going to load those layers into the interactive map, and I will send you folks an email saying, hey, the data has been loaded in there. Get to work. Thank you. So it's 8.30. Um, <laughs> um, do I hear a motion? I move to adjourn. Second. Uh, OK, great. Uh, Craig Meadows? Aye. Tracy Safian? Aye. Peggy Shannon? Aye. Marion Bastain? Aye. Tommy Parks? Aye. It in the Hovne Eye. So the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you. Good night, all. Good, Good night. night. Good night.